Florida State here on ESPN. All right, Matt, thanks very much. Bob Oshusen, Dan Orlovsky, Chris Button. It is time for Florida State and North Carolina at Keenan Stadium. Rain falling in Chapel Hill off and on today, so a slick surface. North Carolina has the early lead. 51 yard field goal converted on their opening possession and now their defense out there for the first time wrapping up Jay Sean Corbin is Tamon Fox. So it will be second down and long for Florida State. For the first time this season unquestioned or at least the last few weeks unquestioned that Jordan Travis is the starting quarterback for Florida State only his second start of the season last week in the win against Syracuse as Mackenzie Milton replaced him all the way back in the opener against Notre Dame and in an inspirational comeback created a heck of a story and now Travis's pass deflected at the line and falls incomplete and Travis earns a second consecutive start but off to a bit of a shaky opening possession now it's third down and long watch Raymond Vahasik right there Gets that right paw up. Now catch it, big fella. It's a beautiful job by the nose tackle. Not going to get many opportunities like that to pick it off. And this is where North Carolina plays to its strength defensively. They got physical corners on the outside. Great pass rush unit by the bigs up on the line of scrimmage. Travis, one on one down the sideline, trying to drop it in. And can't find Helton. It's a good job in coverage by North Carolina secondary. Morrison running step for step downfield with Keyshawn Helton. Man coverage by this Tar Heel secondary. Just a good start really at the line of scrimmage on both sides. North Carolina's offensive line came out. They ran the ball well, protected Sam Howell, and then they have the opportunity quick three and out because of their defensive line. A rugby style kick from Alex Mastromano. And it is fair caught at the 30 yard line by Josh Downs. Three now, North Carolina. Designed this by hand. He said that the palm of the patch is meant to be the different continents coming together. Really an incredible piece of artwork by Fox. And getting spun down on first down with DJ Jones, Jones as if Tamon Fox isn't talented enough as an artist off the field. On the field, a couple of sacks this season. He just passed for fifth place all time in North Carolina history in sacks. Lawrence Taylor. It's a good I mean, name to jump. If you're going to jump a name at some point, that's not a bad one to jump. Fabian Lovett with the tackle on first down. Getting met at the line of scrimmage again is DJ Jones. DJ Jones on the carry. Kayla Delos. Here Thomas came up to make the stop. Now Sam Howell faced Dan with third down and long. He has been really good since struggling in their opener. Yeah, and a, and a big thing on these third downs is the stuff that Florida State defensively at the line of scrimmage with Keir Thomas, number four, and 11, Jermaine Johnson. The games that they can play, it really is about the offensive line giving Sam Howell the opportunity to get the ball out. Four man rush on third down and 12. Stepping up, trying to run for it is Howe. He picked up 11. Looks like he's about a yard shy. It'll be fourth down. I think if you're North Carolina, you got to punt this football, right? Fourth and one. On your side, your of, side the field, of the 50. Yeah, your offensive line's been whooped the past two run plays. Oh, the offense is staying on the field. Ty Chandler in the backfield with Sam Howe. Let's see if this is a hard count. Or are they going for it inside their own 40 yard line here in the first quarter? There's the jump. It looks like the clap by Howell gives them a free play and a free first down on fourth and one. Offside defense number zero. Five yard penalty. Results in the first down. 
I actually think it's 91 Cooper right here. Watch Sam, Sam Howell as he claps. And there's that jump right there, and it's a great job by the center. Brian Anderson of snapping that ball, realizing we've got that free play. Play action, and a little tunnel screen for Josh Downs. He gets to midfield, picks up six. That's five first down snaps for this North Carolina offense. Four of them have been passes. Couple RPOs, you take a shot. Now there's that tunnel screen to Downs. There's the example of this offense just trying to get the ball to Sam Howell's hands quickly today. Chandler picks up one, two, three, maybe four yards. He might have needed five and got them all. Terrific drive by Ty Chandler after contact. This is a nice job again following your backside guard. Montalis and Chandler just keeping his legs going. I love the big push by those offensive linemen coming into the party. And that gives a short third and one for this North Carolina offense. Third down and about a half yard. Chandler will run for it. And he is very close. Brought down at the line of scrimmage by Fabian Lubbock. If the football gets to the 46-yard line of Florida State, it should be a first down. It's there, and without measurement, they say, it is first down North Carolina. You know, a lot of times on those third and shorts, as a quarterback, you always try to remind your back, hey, north and south, no, no lateral here. We're just literally trying to get that first down, and that was a nice example. Chandler there just realized, I don't need to follow the guard all the way outside. Let me go get that one yard that's necessary. Quarterback run. There goes Howe. To the 35 yard line. That's good for another first down. Watch the back Chandler lead up. He's going to go and block the linebacker. Sam Howell's going to read it. I'm going to tuck it down. Chandler, go fill on that linebacker. We're going to take everyone else out of the box. That's a nice job by the transfer from Tennessee. Going to put his face mask on that linebacker. And something North Carolina has done a lot more this year is use number seven, Sam Howell, as a ball carrier. Howell lobs one towards the end zone. And it's broken up. Just a hair late for Justin Olsen, the intended receiver, Sidney Williams. Was able to recover, and it's good to see he was able to fight his way back on the field to save a touchdown. Olsen just runs a straight vertical. Ball's under thrown. Why does it happen? Watch the middle of the pocket get pushed. Johnson all the way back into Sam Howell's lap. He's not able to really step into it or get everything he wants on that ball. And that's kind of a microcosm of sometimes the struggle of this offense is it's there. You're so close. And one guy getting pushed back into the quarterback makes that missed throw happen. Late handoff, DJ Jones. He's got four, so it'll Jones be third down and six. And we talked with Mac Brown about the struggles that they have had at times this season, even in the opener specifically against Virginia Tech. And he said, look, we lost 4,000 yards of offense last year. All right? you lose Deami Brown, Daz Newsom, Javante Williams, Michael Carter. So we were ranked too high, yeah. quite frankly, at the start of the season. We were just thought of as a team that we were not. Now he thinks this young team is starting to find its foot. Yep. Quarterback run again. Broken tackle. I think that maybe they watched that Syracuse tape from last week and saw Garrett Schrader run for 137 Sam yards and said maybe Sam Howell can get some today. That's a nice job by the right guard right there. McKeith in looking for work. He sees the stunt by the defensive line and Sam Howell. I actually asked North Carolina, like, why, why are we running Sam Howell so much? And it's helping our offense. And we don't know how long we've got him. And he's a talented player. DJ Jones, flag down. And he's out of bounds in the red zone by a flag thrown at the line of scrimmage. Personal foul, chop block, 
offense. Number 74 and 73. 15 yard penalty. First down. Yeah, this is really a zone, but watch the right side of the offensive line. Both these guys, Tucker and McKeithen, they're going to work to their left. And as Tucker goes down, or McKeithen goes down and Tucker goes high, you can't have that. Not if that initial guy of McKeithen is low, you can't engage if you're Jordan Tucker coming on top. So after the penalty, first and 25. Chandler it's about a handful let's check in with Matt Barry all right guys Oklahoma lining up for what appears to be a game-winning field goal just to get the runner in position but Kennedy Brooks doesn't go down Oklahoma completes the largest comeback in series history they beat Texas 55 to 48 what a finish Oh boy, those fans for Texas will be crying a Red River <laughs> after that loss. It looked like they had that game in their hip pocket at halftime. What a comeback by the Sooners as how well protected. He'll look end zone again. His time it's there for just downs and a touchdown. Beautiful job by Downs. Watch, get that right foot in as he's falling away from the football. Yeah, that's a catch. What a great job by Sam Howell. That's a touchdown in seven consecutive games for Josh Downs, dating back to the Orange Bowl that we called last season. A 12-play touchdown drive. And even after the 15-yard penalty, from first and 25 to the end zone, Sam Howell with his 15th touchdown pass this season. Here's Downs, okay? Now, Sam Howell is initially going to peek to his right. Great protection by the offensive line. And then here's where Downs is going to dip in and then go over the top of that safety. Howell comes back with his eyes. Beautiful protection. Allows Downs to go track that ball and again, turning his back. Watch it. Watch it. Little setup. Boom. That's the change of tempo that he has on 15 McClellan right there. That's just beautiful route running by 11. Credit that offensive line for North Carolina. Powell stared to the right, stared to the right, came back, allowed Downs to have tempo change in that route. Touchdown for North Carolina. And for Sam Howell, that is his 12th touchdown pass at home this season against no interceptions. about a yard deep in the end zone to Jay. He gets loose. Travis Jay with a good run back all the way out to about the 40 yard line. Well tonight in Las Vegas, the much anticipated trilogy fight between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder for Fury's WBC heavyweight belt. The prelims begin at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. The main card on pay-per-view starting at 9 Eastern to order. Go to ESPNplus.com slash PPV what do you got I mean I'm taking Tyson Fury right I don't think Fury's just a guy that looks like he could take getting beat up a little bit and <laughs> still bring it himself as well similar to me I guess that's a good quality to have this could be a free play it's quarterback run for Jordan Travis Looked like his hard count, or at least the clap they have gotten North Carolina to jump off sides. Offside defense number zero, five yard penalty, first down. So Aquarius Conley jumped in the neutral zone. As it's only the fourth official snap to come for Florida State here in the first quarter. I think Florida State's at their best when they spread the field as much as they can and play on the perimeter. Their backs are their best players, but North Carolina is stout in the middle of their defense.
Quarterback run. Looked like it might have been backwards pass for a moment for Jordan Travis, but it's still good enough for a first down. Chris Button. Yeah, Travis has missed some time with a knee injury this year. Mike Norvell telling us he's as healthy as he can be, but he was limited some in practice this week. I asked Travis this week how he's feeling. He said 100%. And then we laughed about how 100% means something different in October <laughs> than it does in June. Well, they said he was limited in practice this week. Ready to go, though. And look pretty good. State yesterday about Jordan Travis and what does he do best outside the physical? And there, the kids got incredible. Snap thinks he's going to have success. And then they said he was hit 32 times last week. Got a ball 32. He was hit 32 times. So yeah, he's banged up. But it shows the toughness of him showing up every week ready to play. I ran for 113 last week. And here he is to throw. Although now the pocket starts to collapse, so he will take off again. And hurdle for about four yards out to the 45 yard line. Cedric Gray came up to make the stop. He missed the Louisville game a couple of weeks ago with an undisclosed injury. But the week before, against Wake Forest, it seemed like Jordan Travis injured his shoulder. And it looks like we have another injured Seminole on the ground. It's Devontae Love Taylor, the right guard. While the trainers take a look at Love Taylor, we'd like to remind you that Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live Moss Student Section of the Year contest. Use hashtag Student Section Sauce and get the committee's attention. You can also go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how you can compete. You know, this Love Taylor injury is impactful. Uh, he's the leader of the group. He's their most dependable offensive lineman. They don't have a senior outside of him on their offensive line it is freshman it is freshman it is junior it is freshman and so love Taylor the fifth year senior from Trinity Florida is very much so the glue of this offensive line that has had injuries and struggles and to have to lose him this early in this football game is a worst case scenario at least when it comes to their offensive line. So Love Taylor to the injury tent. And second down and 16 for the Knowles. Down early by 10. One minute to go in the first quarter. And now a false start will be called on Darius Washington. Concerning signals. Five yard penalty. Second down. Now that's a call we saw often last season in empty stadiums right. when there was no crowd noise. Sure. And you could hear what the defense was saying, and they could maybe with a cadence get an offensive player to jump. Obviously, with crowd noise, haven't seen that call so far this season, but it just got North Carolina there. So Darius Washington not guilty of a false start. Makes dominated by North Carolina so far. They lead 10 nothing. And in terms of total yards, it's 126 to 12. And Florida State opens. Jay Sean Corbin finds a crease, a first down and then some. All the way down to the 31 yard line. Cam Kelly eventually tripped him up, but he picked up 15. Now he pulled the guard and the tight end, Gibbons. Wilson pop out Corbin their best player. That's an easy scene for him to hit. That is a huge conversion for this offense. And now up tempo. As Corbin picks up three maybe four yards. Well Kenny Dillingham the offensive coordinator Dan for Florida State said look our best players are our running backs. Yep. Right we have to get them the ball. Obviously Jordan Travis oftentimes is a runner as well. So how does that affect their play call. Yeah I mean they try to really get the ball to the perimeter and spread you out as much as possible to create space in their run game because if you're not going to protect the perimeter they'll kick it out and if you do 
They're going to try to just create a scene for guys like Corbin and Ward. Corbin again. And this time he picks up a yard before he is driven back. Darius Conley, Cedric Gray, both there for North Carolina. That's a beautiful play by Conley. Conley is six foot five, six foot and a half. He is 250 pounds, 15 pounds, and he will come up and hit you. And that's why freaking nature athlete loves contact. They can use him North Carolina defensively. Sometimes he's in coverage. Sometimes he plays near the line of scrimmage. Sometimes they'll bring him as a blitzer. His Versatility is huge for their defense. Got to pay attention to Travis as a scrambler. The Knowles have struggled on third down, as you just saw, but they get a third down conversion here. Sean Helton got loose over the middle. Watch Helton come from the left side of your screen. You're going to see the mesh. Two receivers passing each other. Conley trailing from behind. It's a good job by Travis of going through his progression. Here comes Helton on that shallow cross. And that's why getting into a third and five helps your offense, because that shallow can get you that first down. Play action. Travis, little shovel pass, gets it to Cameron McDonald. And the tight end is inside the 15-yard line before he's bumped out. Picked up four. It's a good job finding Cam McDonald, but a little bit better protection. Travis is going to be able to see Jordan Wilson, number four. The tight end was uncovered down the field. But a good job getting that completion. Second and six, this is where they want to live, where they can put their slot up to the top and really try to lean on the defensive line. Instead, it's war. Very close to a first down. Inside the 10. Close to the eight yard line. And the nose of the football right on our line to gain. Again, it was Cam Kelly and Cedric Ray on the stop. Now, right back up at the line of scrimmage is Florida State. And it looks like they have, without measurement, said it's a first down. This is the 10th play of this drive upcoming. It's interesting. They're keeping these tight ends, Cam McDonald and Jordan Wilson, 87 and 4 on the field. It quiets the defense down a little bit. You got to protect both the run and pass. Sean Ward cuts it back. It's down to the four yard line. Another tackle for Cameron Kelly. On the tackle for the target. You know, when you put those two tight ends on the field, and North Carolina is keeping five defensive backs on the field, you're at an advantage offensively. You're going to have a tight end often blocking a safety or a nickel defender. That helps your run game a ton. We have another injured player. It is Ray Vahasek. Second down and goal after the injury timeout for Florida State. Sean Ward buried behind the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go. Good penetration from Chris Collins. Tamon Fox. Now it's third down and goal. I'd like to see Florida State move the pocket here. Travis is such a threat with his legs. And whether it's a play action pass movement or design sprint out. I want to give him the edge as an option. Nothing there. Tuck it and see if you can use your athleticism and go score. You can see 51 baby on Johnson is in now at right guard. Devontae Love Taylor with ice on the knee in the injury tent. Third down and goal from the five. There is Travis on a rollout to the front right pylon. Diving catch is made. That's a touchdown for the freshman Malik McClay. That's the first career touchdown for McLean. Sidearm flip by Travis. I think he got that. I think his right leg gets down, his hands are under that ball. It's a nice job by the 6'4 freshman from Alabama, man. Extended, watch the right knee right there. Yep. At first blush, you wonder, oh, did he launch in the air to catch the ball and then maybe land out of bounds? But it looks like before any part of his body hit out of bounds, it looked like the right knee might have made first contact in the end zone. 
I agree. And it doesn't look like as he hits the ground that that ball is touching the ground or moving in any way. So I think the two things, that right knee's down, and then when the, he hits the ground with the ball, it doesn't look like the ball hits the ground or moves in any way. I think that's a catch. Well, again, the ball can touch the ground. But without moving, correct? Correct. In the judgment of the officials and then replay, as long as the receiver has complete control of the ball, if the ball touches the ground, that's fine. It's still a catch. Now, if they look at that replay and see as he comes to the ground, the ball hit the ground and bounce in any way, yes. indicating he didn't have complete control of it, well, then yeah. you have an incomplete pass. So that's what probably they also have to take a look at. But I think you're right about the right knee, yeah. making sure that he got down in bounds. And again, it was called a touchdown on the field. So that precedent being set is After important as well. Review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So Florida State on the board. Watch the route. Again, McLean up top. It's going to be a fade. He's going to go up, peak, and then come back to the front, front pylon. you got to sell the fade, though. Watch his head peak back. Head peaks back. Now snap it off. Come to the front pylon. Jordan Travis expecting him to be there. That's a beautiful route. Again, six foot four, 205 pound freshman is running a route like that. That's beautiful. A seven and a half minute drive for Florida State. Just what they needed. Four and a half points a game. <laughs> they were overrated. Auburn's way ahead of the curve. Ty Chandler to the left of Sam Howell in the backfield. And Chandler will pick up a couple. And just to, I think, build off of what Chris was talking about, with the influence of a Bobby Bowden, even on a Mac Brown. You know, talking to Mac about the times that he spent with Bobby Bowden, he said one of the biggest lessons I take forward from that, he mentioned Coach Holtz as well, those older coaches were so good to me. Yes. That I now pay it forward, right? Like any time a young coach wants to come, as Hal throws one up the seam and Downs almost pulled it in with one hand so now it'll be third down and nine but anytime I have a chance to spend some time with a younger coach the way they spent with me that's my job to pay it forward because those those guys were so good to me and Bobby Bowden was first on the list and I think it's something he is enjoying doing as well as kind of giving back to the next generation of coaches like Bobby Bowden like the Mac Browns like the Lou Holtzes that we'll talk about 40 years from now so to speak and they'll be thinking coaches like Mac Brown for the stuff that he did for them. Only a three man rush. How long throw to the sideline timing routed it's through the hands of Downs and incomplete. Well Downs. covered by Jamie Robinson and it's a punt for North Carolina. Watch Downs is a three they're trying to get a rub now come back to the sideline Robinson in his pit back pocket. That is beautiful coverage. It's a great throw by Sam Howell. Tough catch by Downs as he just turns his head. But that's really, for me, Jamie Robinson, the sophomore, the transfer from South Carolina, having premier coverage to really demand the perfect throw and catch by Howell and Downs, and it doesn't happen. So Ben Kiernan will kick it to Keyshawn Helton. Fair catch is made. At the 35 yard line. Without moments for Oklahoma where they <laughs> were sweating it out a little bit. How about the comeback by the Sooners in the second half against Texas? Amazing. I, I, new quarterback, right? Caleb Williams comes in today, replaces Spencer Rattler, who struggled, has a huge comeback. I think there's going to be some decision making for Lincoln Riley. Deshaun Corbin who came into today averaging over 100 yards rushing per game number four in America at 8.1 yards per carry and just picked up nine. But I would say today's at least so far is a little different. They're actually churning out some five six yard runs. He's got that eight plus yards per carry because they've had big plays. He's had 50 yards 60 yard rips. This is a little bit more methodical run game that we're seeing today. Now it's a quarterback keeper and Travis has a first down. This offense for Florida State has been so predicated on some of the big plays, and they've been striving for consistency. 
And the more that they can play together on their offensive line, the more they'll have continuity, which will breed that consistency. Again, they're still very young, and their quarterback is going to be more reliant on trusting protection instead of the childhood instincts of tuck and run. Jordan Travis, there he goes, in the open field, looking for the end zone. He will not be caught. 53 yards and a touchdown. For the Florida State touchdown. We watch these two defenders back here for Carolina. They're going to have the opportunity to vice Jordan Travis on this RPO, and he's just going to go right by both of them. And then you see that explosive speed, right? He, he gets past those initial defenders and then the ability to run away. When you're those second and third. Pizza's the hut. You're watching ESPN College Football presented by Papa John's. Jordan Travis with another rushing touchdown, his second of the season. And he is closing in on a thousand yards rushing for his career. He's only a redshirt sophomore, and he's already broken Charlie Ward's record for most rushing yards in Florida State history for a quarterback. Just a different way of playing offense if you are a traditional Knowles fan. Great start to this game. Watch his eyes, third down, peak left, come back to my progression find my shallow cross and helped it beautiful now down in the red zone sprint him out watch his body on this throw young man almost falls over it's a strike to McLean for the touchdown and how about this one watch him set his left leg in the ground bonk past Morrison and then the ability has some juice to run away from the Tar Heel defenders it's a young man who has had moments where the talent shows up and if they can keep him healthy and protect him across that offensive line. He's really got a unique skill set of a thrower and a runner that can really help ascend this offense. Here's DJ Jones. Lowers his shoulder and lowers the boom on Jamie Robinson and picks up six. <laughs> Ouch. Watch this. DJ Jones and Jamie Robinson. Just hear this. Those are plays that I'm, I was always thankful that I played quarterback and never had to be at that moment. It's funny, I think if your body type is someone that would fit in that moment perfectly. DJ Jones, first down. He's got five more. You know, when you play these RPO-based offenses, which again, North Carolina is, I think defensively, Adam Fuller, their defensive coordinator for Florida State, really preaches two things. Force the handoff. Force the ball to get handed off, and then be slow to go. But when we do, we got to bring population to the football. You see that ball get handed off, you got to go as a defense. Quarterback run for Howell, breaks a tackle. Little dead leg and a slide for Sam Howell. And it looks like he will be marked just shy of the first half. All right, so he's really reading this safety. He's going to come over. The corner is going to blitz. That tells Howell to pull it and throw. It's not there because the corner is going to be there. This is instincts. Tuck the ball. Don't make a bad play worse and go get your first down or near your first down. Those are the instincts that we talk about with Sam Howell. And they'll hand it to D.J. Jones, and he will lose a couple. So second and one becomes third down and about three. Malcolm Ray in the middle of that pile up along with Amari Gaynor. And, and Bob, that plays kind of a image of the North Carolina offensive line this year. They're not getting vertical. They're not changing the line of scrimmage too much. They're getting pushed back. Bad feet, missed assignments. That's why they're struggling with consistency on their front. And it looks like we have an injured Seminole over right in front of their sideline. So it'll be third down and a long two close to three for North Carolina after the injury timeout. Looks like it's Jarvis Brownlee 
one of the starting corners that's being helped over onto the Florida State bench. You can see in the middle of that huddle right there is Phil Longo with the Jordan logo. That's the offensive coordinator for North Carolina. And he's got a call really this season in, in this game with a little uncertainty with the mindset of how do I help this struggling offensive line? Maybe I can only call certain plays one way on third and two and conversations with this quarterback as well of being very aware of what we're dealing with. All star offense number 74 five yard penalty third down. So that's the right tackle Jordan Tucker that five yard penalty makes it third down and seven. And so far on third down today North Carolina again that offensive line has struggled with the stunts and the twists from Florida State meaning they're taking two defensive linemen and really almost making a scissors action it forces you to communicate and pass things off that's going to be paramount on this third and seven to give Sam Howell time four man rush Howell is going to run again this time he's got the first down breaking tackles still on his feet no slide there to the 43 yard line of Florida State a gain of 18. There's this stunt on the left side and the big fellas up front Azudu pass it off and Howell sees that seam. You gotta love the way that Sam Howell plays this game man whatever it takes coach you need to be a little bit more of a runner this season and in this game I'll do it nice job by that offensive line of passing off that twist and no hesitation by Sam Howell. Both quarterbacks have done a lot of damage on the ground. E.J. Jones does even more damage on the ground for the heels. Another first down. E.J. Jones on the carry. Watch the left side open up for D.J. Jones. Those linebackers fall back, following the tight end Morales. Good blocking on the perimeter by Antoine Green. And D.J. Jones with the finish. D.J. Jones only carried the ball 11 times all of last season. It was the Javante Williams Michael Carter show. Here's Howe taking a shot. One on one at the goal line underthrown and intercepted by Jarian Jones. There is a flag on the play. Flag down. And out the receiver. Number 69 against the offense. That penalty is climb. Results of play. Touchback. Only the second interception thrown this season, or the first, I should say, at home by Sam Howe. He's going to take his shot to the right to Choffrey Brown. What a beautiful job by Jerry and Jones of getting his eyes back. Watch. Watch him get his eyes back. Find that football and go track it. They're taking a shot to Choffrey Brown, the sophomore. And this is a beautiful job on the go route of using your body in between the quarterback and the receiver if you're Jones and finding the football. That is a big interception. The sophomore from Mississippi transfers over from Mississippi State. Tracks that ball and go gets a huge interception. Again the first thrown at home this year by Sam Howell and only the second since opening day. He threw three on opening day. It's only been two since. Rayshon Ward on a swing pass. He won't go down easy. Picks up about seven and a half. Cedric Gray eventually got him down. Ward right up the gut. He picks up 10 more. Another try for Ward. And he's still able to maintain his footing after first contact and scoot forward through the arms of Miles Murphy. Picks up five. Gain of five on the run. You know, Corbin and Ward are such young players for this offense. 
And you mentioned their offensive coordinator, Kenny Dillingham, realizing I, whatever ways that they have to kind of build their offense around getting those guys the football is best. And right now it's in the interior of their offensive line. Jordan Travis reads it well and gets the ball across midfield. A nine yard carry. And boy, this has been a very impressive ground game here in the first half for Florida State. As you would expect, I mean, Kenny Dillingham told us we are basically a bubble screen. Right. Get the ball to our running backs, run the ball with our quarterback type team. That is when we are at our best. I'd, I'd say this, one, they're handling the movement by North Carolina's defensive line, the stunts and the twists. Two, there's not been many negative plays. That's a big deal for this offense. And really in the last two drives, They've kept North Carolina's offense off the field. Now, the turnover helps, but if they don't get negative plays, they can stay committed to this run game. A brief delay there for a sideline warning against Florida State as they were having a hard time getting the chains reset. Low snap scooped up by Travis, given to Corbin. And he's got two, maybe three more yards. Cedric Gray down holding his left forearm. So we have an injury timeout as Cedric Gray goes back down. Here come the trainers. Let's go back to Matt. All right, guys, coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, Texas and OU and a finish for the ages. You won't believe how this one ended. Plus, we'll check in on Georgia and Auburn. The dogs look good early. And speaking of good finishes, Ole Miss and Arkansas came down to the final play. I'm going to try to get Sam Otzer to smile by halftime. It is rough here in Studio Y. Joey Galloway, I'll just fill him in on what we're going to do. We'll see you guys coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report. Tough break for Ocho in those Longhorns today. A lot of chatter from him. I'm surprised Matt didn't shout out Arizona State in their win last night. Not because of him, but strictly because Ryan Clark, my boy's son, made the game-saving or game-ending interception, Jordan Clark. Or maybe give us a UConn-UMass update. Yeah, how did uh, how did UConn do in there? Yeah, we're playing right now still. Yeah, is, yeah. It, is the game still going? Huge game. Yeah. Dozens, I'm sure, on hand to take it in. Bob, Dan, and Chris with two and a half minutes to go here in the first half. And this is like an old school academy game. These are two teams that are basically going at each other with the ground game. It is physical around the line of scrimmage. Again, straight quarterback run. Another broken tackle for Jordan Travis. Let's see where they mark him. Very close to the first down. Made Jaquarius Conley miss at the line of scrimmage, but he's a yard short. Third down and one. The, the, you know, Jordan Travis, you, you see the ability to have speed. I didn't realize he was this wiggly. You know, that, that short area quickness has really made some guys for this Carolina defense miss. Great fake by Travis. Third down and one, and he's got the first down. Easily moving the chains as eventually Bohasek scrambled downfield to bring him down. There goes Fox right there. That's the read. Once he crashes down, the tight end's going to leave, take the safety with him. Travis with the quick pull. That's a beautiful job. Again, that ball handling. I try to make sure everyone understands. That's hard. you got to see that defensive end crash. And do I give? Do I pull? He pulls it. It's a big third down conversion with his legs. Big offensive first half for Jordan Travis, mostly on the ground, now trying to do it here through the air. He's going to lob one, looking for the end zone, drops it in to Ontario Wilson for the touchdown. I guess, Dan, when you run it effectively the way that they have, all of a sudden, a shot play is there. Travis hits it. Yeah, beautiful fake, right? You fake to the left, bring protection, roll the quarterback out, and he throws really back across the field for a big touchdown to Ontario Wilson. That is beautiful timing and play design by the Seminoles. 
Second touchdown reception of the season for Ontario Wilson. An eight play, 80 yard touchdown drop. All right, Wilson starts here. He's going to come in motion and really cross the field on the post. Watch these backside defenders for North Carolina. You get the play fake. Now, Jordan Travis has got a peek backside to confirm that they've come down. Yes, they have. Then you could throw to that space that you've created with your formation to Ontario Wilson. Look at his, watch his eyes, peek backside. Okay, those defenders stayed low. All I have to do is make sure I put enough air under that throw to Ontario Wilson and touchdown. Man, what a beautiful drive by Florida State offensively. He knows it. He's hot right now. Let's head down to Chris. Players this week told me that there was just a different sense of energy during the week, finally getting that win, kind of feeling like they've made some progress. Coach told us it's not really energy, it's confidence that now we've seen we can do the small steps to do things right. That's where we see the growth, and that's been the biggest difference this week. Yeah, and, and Coach talked about the confidence in the close game. It broke the barrier, right, of, oh, we, we do the work. Yeah, okay, now it pays off. He said the next step is for us to go on the road and play well and that they're really growing better in doing all the stuff that gives you the opportunity for success. Well, they have not had much success this season. You look at the numbers. They scored, obviously, with the Mackenzie Milton show on opening night, 41-38, a loss in overtime. But then the heartbreaking loss to Jacksonville State where they managed 17 points, 14 points against Wake. Only 23 in a loss to Louisville, but 33 last week at home against right. Syracuse and a game that amounted to a shootout. It's a team that only averages 25 points a game. They've now scored three straight touchdowns. They've got 21 on the board. This is probably about as much in rhythm as their offense has looked this season, certainly with Jordan Travis, a quarterback. Al trying to answer. There's Josh Downs. He's got 11 and a first down. Watch Downs in the slot, change of pace again. Now sit down in that zone window, come back to the quarterback, see it the same way. I just love the way Downs runs his routes. He does have elite speed and smooth stride and change of direction, but the change of pace in his route running. Flag awesome. down, though. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense, number 69, 15-yard penalty, first down. That's the center, Johnson. Right side. That's what we popped him for, huh? And that one hurts with only 46 seconds to go on the half. That's Brian Anderson. Well, they called the penalty on Kieran Johnson. Correct. Who was in the game? First 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 so now with the clock stopped, the timeout is called by North Carolina. Jordan Travis, three straight touchdown drives. He has led the Knolls to. How about this throw? Right to the front pylon, his body's falling over. Zone read, RPO built together. Split him. Now a run away, long speed. And then the pocket, you move it, play fake, bring protection. This is a perfect throw to Wilson across the field. A little bit of everything from Jordan Travis today. The decision making, the ability to throw the ball downfield, using his feet to not only be a weapon and designed run, but also creating stuff. And you mentioned it, Bob. This is the most rhythm and in control this Florida State offense has looked all season. And it's such a different way of watching offense if you're a Florida State fan. Obviously, all fans care about is winning. So they'll fall in love, I'm sure, with any system if you win. Right. But that traditional pro-style pocket-passing offense, it is different now as D.J. Jones gets into the secondary. And certainly still enough time with a couple of timeouts for North Carolina and a run like that of 17 for them to try and take shots downfield. Here's Sam Howe. 
Bob's one to the sideline and throws it away up over the head of Emory Simmons. Yeah, that's a very good decision by Sam Howell right there. A, a short completion does nothing for you right there. That incompletion saves time. 28 seconds left. You've got two timeouts, so you can really throw the ball anywhere. A big thing for your receivers to, is to understand if you catch that ball inside the numbers, Get as many yards as you can. If you catch it outside the numbers, do everything you can to get out of bounds to stop that clock. No sack if you're Sam Howell. Everything's got to come out of your hands. Four man rush. And he'll throw it over the middle. Caught by DJ Jones, but they would almost certainly have to take a timeout here. It'll be third down and one. I, I think you're going to get a face mask on Florida State defensively. Well, that would change things. There is a flag down at midfield. A 15 yard penalty here would just about put North Carolina in field goal range with 21 seconds to go in a half. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 20. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. The clock will start on the snap. First down. Kalen Deloach, the middle linebacker, comes in there on DJ Jones. That's their correct call. Now, do they get their timeout back because of that penalty? Yes. Out of the sideline, and his receiver downs slipped coming out of his break. Looked like Kevin Knowles may have slipped as well in coverage. Just miscommunication. He's trying to go out and sit to get the defender. That's the go route up top by Green, but Josh Downs is in the slot. He's trying to sell him running the out route and snap it off. So you get the defender to drive outside, and there's that easy completion. You know, I'd like to see if, if North Carolina can work the middle of the field. You know, there's, there's windows in there. Not everything has to go to the perimeter. Blitz coming. Hal out of the pocket. To the 30 yard line. Out of bounds at the 29 with a flag down. Holding. Offense, number 75. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Watch the left tackle here, Azuda. You're going to get this stunt by Florida State. When that happens again, communication and pass off. Does a good job of setting it there, and as Howell leaves the pocket, he's going to hook on to 14 Kushni right there, and that creates that hold. That is a huge penalty against this offense. Yeah, they probably Second only needed charge, five or six out. yards to get into field goal range North where Carolina. they previously were, and certainly the house seconds. scramble would have gotten them there. But now they're going to need probably about 20 to 25 yards to get into field goal range, and they only have nine seconds left in the half, although they do have a timeout. A reminder, you can kick off your Week 5 NFL Sunday tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. The Countdown crew on ESPN and the app. They'll have exclusive interviews with Dak Prescott and Joe Burrow. Also, our Week 5 Monday Night Football matchup as the 3-1 and one Ravens hosting the Colts. That comes your way at 8 Eastern. Monday Night, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. This, this guy right here, an old ACC player, I would say Lamar Jackson's not getting enough conversation for MVP in the NFL right now. Their football team is decimated by injuries, specifically their offense. Tailbacks, receivers haven't played. Rashad Bateman, their first round pick from Minnesota, hasn't played up until last week. And Lamar has just been spectacular. And it really has been one of those moments where they're just like, hey, put the team on your back and go do it. And he's done it. The fact that their three run is incredible. Yeah, you're not going to win the MVP First with touchdown. four touchdowns against three interceptions. Bob, trust me, that dude has been unbelievable. I agree with him. the stats numbers. I'm just saying, you are not winning the MVP if at the end of the season, you, if you were to put that out to a full season, he ends the year with 20 touchdowns and 14 or 15 interceptions, you're not going to win the MVP. But if he throws for 35-plus hundred yards and runs for 1,000 yards and has 12 touchdowns rushing, Again, with a team that's decimated, yep. he's he's gonna. I'm gonna push the conversation. And if they're three and one, and again, you put that out all the way to the end of the season, that makes I, you a yeah. 12 to 13 win team. That would probably be a big Get check mark in your favor, right? <laughs> Absolutely.
Although it's tough to put his numbers next to, say, yeah. a Dak Prescott yes. through this first month of the year when you really start to talk about the MVP conversation. I mean, look, we're barely, you know, 25% of the way into the right. NFL season. I think in this situation for North Carolina, a couple things are important because you have one timeout in nine seconds. If you are the person who catches this ball, you really want to declare yourself down. Unless you're taking your Hail Mary, catch it, get down, and call your timeout immediately because trying to get an extra yard or two takes an extra second or two off the clock. How? Long throw to the sideline, and now the only play for North Carolina will be to throw one in the end zone. Emory Simmons, the intended receiver. And, and they've got some size at receiver. You know, Antoine Green is 6'2", Olsen is 6'2", Sam Howell's arm is plenty strong. So the big thing is trying to run around if you're Sam Howell, create some time, allow those guys to get into the end zone, and just give the opportunity for that ball to get tipped up and caught. Florida State. So Florida State is going to call another timeout here on defense. Well, this season, along with their contributions to university's general scholarship funds, for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you to Allstate. mentioned Sam Howell came into the season with such hype right 60 seconds that opening game they were dealing with their starting center Brian Anderson and he didn't he wasn't able to play and then they lost the backup center and so he had a rough afternoon and then really since then he's been spectacular over those next four games and then today a little bit more of up highs and lows right now he's been great with his feet and in, in 58 rush yards but the, the pass game has not excelled. Now, protection hasn't been great. There's miscommunication between him, receivers. The interception is an opportunity ball downfield to Choffrey Brown. But this is not kind of the player that we've seen over the last three years as far as throwing the football offensively. Try and buy some time here, and heave one to the end zone. And it is knocked down, and that will end the half with Florida State on top by two scores. That's the end of the first half. This is a chuck by Sam Howell now, and they got bodies down there. That ball is going to get batted down by Florida State defensively. I don't know if that was on purpose. And Downs is there for the tip right there, and if that ball is just tipped a little bit more to the left, that's going to go right in his lap. It's a good job by Florida State's defense before the half right there, giving up no points. And they will start the third quarter. Set for the start of the third quarter in Chapel Hill. And Florida State will start the second half with the football. And they will start at their own 25-yard line. Bob Oshusen, Dan Orlovsky, Chris Budden. Very impressive first half. Offensively, from a the rhythm standpoint for Florida State. Travis goes to work to start off the second half. Deftly avoiding a tackler in the backfield. And picking up about six on first down. He is elusive. Certainly more so than we've seen at any point this year. Yeah, he makes Fox miss once. And then the ability to kind of just again find the hole that he has to get to as a runner, making Cedric Gray miss and getting six yards on first down. 93 yards rushing for Jordan Travis. Jay Sean Corbin picks up a couple. Let's check out our first half stats brought to you. Get their pass game going way more if they're going to try and come back and win this football game. Third down and two. And that time, North Carolina ready for the carry by Jordan Travis as Cam Kelly read it and made the stop near the line of scrimmage to force fourth down. Watch Kelly, this is Kelly right here. Fox is gonna crash down and take the run, 12. Kelly, stay disciplined, your job is the quarterback. That's an outstanding job, I mentioned it, the discipline by the defense. Cam Kelly knows the goal was to come out and get a stop on defense. Carolina does that, now they're gonna give their All-American quarterback, Sam Howell, the, the ball. Come 
Pagano trying to angle a punt towards the sideline. Instead, it goes down the middle of the field to Josh Downs. And he is brought down almost immediately. Let's check in with Chris. Well, Mike Norvell just extremely proud of how his guys handled the slow start. We're able to pick things up in the second quarter. Jordan Travis managing the offense while extending drives, which have allowed for the explosive plays. For Matt Brown, he just said offensively, we keep shooting ourselves in the foot. Penalty after penalty, then we have the turnover. He's like, that's uncharacteristic of us. We just seem to settle down and play our game. That's the number three passing attack in the ACC, number 15 in America. As Sam Howell and this air attack averages about 310 yards per game. He's only got 73 yards passing so far. And they'll start on the ground here with Chandler picking up a yard. Bobby, you talk about the passing attack. You know, Josh Downs, their great receiver, number 11, four catches for 57 yards in the first half. As we see Ty Chandler, everyone else had two catches. So as much as you want to try to get the ball if you're Sam Howell to Josh Downs and their offensive coordinator Phil Longo, it's important that other people got to make some plays. Simmons, Green, Walston, Morales, some other people are going to have to step up. It can't just be the Josh Downs show. Ball start. Offense, number 11. Five-yard penalty, second down. So the same problems that plagued North Carolina in the first half, according to Mac Brown, bite them here in the second half. A one-yard gain on first down, right. and now a penalty to get you behind the chains. It's their ninth penalty already, and now it's second down and 14. And a lot of them are penalties you can control. You know, the, the pre-snap penalties, and those are the things that drive coaches nuts. Blitz off the edge, Howell out of the pocket. Again, he will try and get the job done with his legs. Slides out to the 36-yard line. Here, Thomas forced him to scramble, but he picked up 10. Been the story of the game so far. You know, the, the rush for Florida State, making Sam move, and he's done a nice job of it. Third and four. Now, this is where we want to move Josh Downs around. Where's number 11? Can we create that matchup for him? They've got him in the number two spot right here. Quarterback draw instead. Another good run for Sam Howell. And a first down. Nine yard gain for Howell. It's a beautiful job. Howell peaks to the right and then he's, you see Ty Chandler lead blocking. That's an awesome job of him kind of hopping through, stepping through that tackle. A third down run game with the quarterback has been nice for Carolina's offense. It's neutralized the pass rush of Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas as well. Screen, downs, blockers, speed, and a first down all the way down to the 34-yard line of Florida State. That's a 21-yard game. Fake the bubble, then come back towards the ball. It's a beautiful block by the left tackle. See how he fakes the bubble? He fakes the bubble. That forces the defender to widen just a little bit. And then he comes back to the ball. I create a bigger window, and that allows the tackle to go kick out. And a penalty marker at the There's end of the play. For a late hit. And that will now be picked up. Originally, a flag was thrown for the Robert Cooper late hit. And now, after a discussion, that flag picked up. But you can hear the Keenan Stadium crowd just saw the replay. And I think collectively wondering why the flag was picked up. It's a terrible missed call. Here's Chandler right up the middle. Dodging tacklers into the red zone. He picked up 13. Amari Gaynor and Jamie Robinson combine on the tackle. down just shy of the 20-yard line. I think, listen, I, I think the thing that drives college football fans with their anger is you're going to miss calls. You can't miss those. You're going to miss a holding call here, a P.I. there. 
when a 336 pounder jumps on a receiver at the end, a second after the play's over, you cannot miss that. They fake the end around. Ow! Down the sideline into the end zone, Kamari Morales, the tight end's got a touchdown. It's a beautiful play fake. Morales down the left sideline, freezing the defenders. I love the play design by North Carolina. That's what they needed as a team. Your defense gets the stop. Get the ball to your offense. Sam Howell makes a couple plays with his legs and throws the strike to Morales. 70-yard touchdown drive for North Carolina. The response from Sam Howell, and it's a four-point game for a response from North Carolina. Well, they came out, got a three and out defensively, and went right down the field for a touchdown to make this a four-point game. Now we'll see if Florida State can respond. A momentum swing early here in the third quarter. And another touchback off the kickoff by Jonathan Kim. A little things go a long way. So first of all, the receiver up here, your job. Push vertical and take away that safety. Now watch Morales. He's going to come out and kind of bluff and then go down the sideline. That's the loach right there. He's going to slow play him like, hey, I'm coming out the block. You see the tempo change? I'm blocking you. Now I go down the sideline. Receiver take that safety. Beautiful vision by Sam Howell. Just enough patience by Kamari Morales. That's a great touchdown for North Carolina to start this second half. And a great start to the second half for Sam Howell. Gordon Travis, Tayshawn Corbin, the tandem in the backfield. Play action. Travis sets up the screen. Corbin has it. He's got a yard. Tamari Fox, Aquarius Conley combined on the tackle. So nice job by Conley there of forcing that cutback by Corbin when he's got everybody on his defense running to the ball. You're starting to hear a little energy from this home stadium now. Deep shot for Jordan Travis. He's got a man. It's Helton behind the defense, and he is deep into North Carolina territory with a first down. There is a flag down. 45 yards if the play holds up. Personal foul, rough in the passer. Defense, number 51. First down. Make it a 60 yard game. Eight straight completions now for Jordan Travis. You're going to see the protection. The Hasek in the middle right there, 51. That's the right call. This is very similar action to the touchdown to Wilson in the first half. Miscommunication. You see Conley with the hands up. It's the same motion that they used to get Wilson open the first half. They use it this time to free up Helton in this third quarter. Just like that, Florida State in the red zone. Blitz coming off the edge. Travis realizes it, avoids it, and gets to the 10-yard line. Scrambles for five, make it six. Out of bounds at the nine. Watch the corner on the left side of the screen come. Make a miss. That's an outstanding drive. Job by Travis in making Grimes miss. I mean, think about it. If he doesn't see that corner, you're looking at second and 15. Now it's second and four. That's 11 hidden yards, so to speak, strictly because of the childlike reaction by Jordan Travis. Second straight week, Jordan Travis hits 100 yards on the ground. Still eight minutes to go in the third quarter. He'll give it to Corbin. Up the middle. Still alive down to the one yard line. First and goal, Florida there State. Go, Corbin, on the there is a flag. flag down again. And getting up with a limp is Jay Sean Corbin. Watch the puller. Wilson step. Bring Johnson. 
Both those guys kick out. And Corbin goes that. right up inside of it. Defense number 56. Penalty is half the distance to go. First down. So they call Tamari Fox for unsportsmanlike conduct. So it becomes a half yard penalty as they'll put the ball inside the one first and goal. Corbin even with the limp stays in the game. Travis quarterback sneak looking for a push. He's across the goal line. And it is a Florida State touchdown. How about the answer by the Knowles? So he's the the field, field, right back touchdown. up to 10 with the extra point pending. To get in. Keeps his legs going. Little push. Little Reggie Bush push. By the backs there and the tight ends. You mentioned it. What an answer by Florida State. A five play, 75 yard touchdown drive. So Ryan Fitzgerald. To try and push the lead right back up to 11. Florida State and North Carolina trade touchdowns. It's a two score lead for the Knowles again. Now the pressure back on Sam Howell and that North Carolina offense to see if they can respond. All right, your answer is? Deshaun Watson. Let's find out. The answer to our Aflac trivia question, Sam Howell trails only who for career passing yards per game in ACC history. Number one overall pick, Jameis Winston. Jameis threw for 295 a game? Threw a lot. I'm surprised. Jimbo's usually a little bit more balanced attack. <laughs> All right, Jameis. Deshaun's got to be up there, though. He's probably number two. Won a national championship. Playing that way. Sam Howell's number two, so Deshaun's three. Midway through the third quarter, Howell rifles one to Downs in stride. First down. Watch it crisscross out of the bunch. Patience by Downs. It's called F post. He's just setting that defender, Jamie Robinson, get him to widen across his face. I like getting that bunch set. For their offense to create some space for downs. EJ Jones driven back. No gain on first down. Jermaine Johnson. Not called his name as often as you would think for a guy who leads his team not only. In sacks, tackles for loss, but also overall tackles. He has had a heck of a year. Well, don't forget, he's the type of guy that they move around a ton, Florida State. And so North Carolina has been very conscious of only running certain plays towards him, running away from him. So he's still impacting the football game. Ow. Right over the middle, and it's dropped by Choffrey Brown. This is one Choffrey Brown's going to want back because he's going to score. It's beautiful. The play fake gets those linebackers to come up. Watch it on the left side of your screen. Come right in the window. He is going to score. The safety slips McClellan, and he's going to run forever. That's a big drop on second and 10. Now you're in third and 10. Just talked about Johnson. This is him right here. Watch him on these games. He helps push the pocket. There goes Howell. Hit from behind. And knocked out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Only a three yard gain. Here, Thomas with pressure as well. Watch the games. Internal with Keir Thomas. Kushney's there. Johnson with the pressure. Sam Howell has to once again scramble. So we talk about some time of these non box score mistakes that don't show up. Second and 10. Strike to your receiver. Huge play. Now you got to punt. Blitzer, beautiful now. Watch left foot in the ground. He puts his hands on Morrison. Jordan Travis fast enough. The motion 
Fake it to the left, roll it to the right. Look at all the space you've created. Those defenders jump up. Now Jordan Travis, make the perfect throw. You do to Ontario Wilson. Touchdown Seminoles. We've seen a little bit of everything from this dynamic athlete as quarterback for this Seminole offense. He's got 101 rushing yards and gives the Treshawn Ward here. What a little move out on the edge by Ward. Oh, did he juke his way to a 16-yard gain? Let's check in with Chris. One of the things that Mike Norvell loves about Jordan Travis is how he impacts the team even when he couldn't physically do it and you see that on the sidelines after the scoring drive he went up to each of his teammates on offense looked them in the eye and congratulated each of them small conversations with every one of his teammates. Ward up the middle. Spinning near midfield before he's brought down and you just saw already an historic performance today the last 25 years for Florida State only EJ Manuel has had a two rushing two passing touchdown game. I guess your word to your teammates in the huddle carries a lot more weight you got produced like that. Yeah. Hey guys I'm balling so. <laughs> so listen up. Yeah. Here's Ward. And this time only a gain of about a yard. Ward on the carry. Ari Ritzy, true freshman, made the tackle. I, I think the biggest thing for Travis is you see just trusting in in his ability. You know, sometimes when it's okay, I got to go with my feet. He trusts it, and okay, I can hang in the pocket and throw the ball. And that's been the biggest thing is he realizes those attributes that he have. Those are difference makers. It kind of allows him to make the right decisions. Corbin took the handoff and the decision turned out to be the wrong one as Desmond Evans read it perfectly. A loss of three. Yeah, That's Evans, a big one for the North Carolina defense. He beat the blitzer. He beat the puller as an edge guy. That was huge. Now third and 12. North Carolina defensively has really just played some soft quarters coverage. And I still think Florida State could even entertain moving the pocket here for Travis. Allowing him to get out on a perimeter to cut the field in half. And he can still use his legs if he wants. No deep safeties for North Carolina. And now they'll drop one off as Trey Morrison goes back to center field. Here's Travis on third down and long. Out of the pocket, throws on the run to the sideline and making a toe tapping catch is Helton. He's got it for the first down. I mean, this is just spectacular. Look at the ball placement right on the sideline. I see you, Helton. Toe drag swag. That's good on Sundays for two. A gain of 18. And it looks like replay is going to buzz down, stop the game, and check this play. Really on the field is a completed catch. That play is under further review. Well, it is an important play. It's a third down and 12 conversion for 18 yards, but Dan is. Is there any doubt in your mind no. that this is a catch? That's a toe down, and he controls that all the way to the ground. This should be, I would think, a very quick confirmation. Yeah, I think that's, I think he's got feet down there. I think they pop up, and then I think he gets him down again before his body gets out of bounds. You can even see a little of the fill I'm of the field, be... so that shows you that, you, you know, that that black substance that fills the field, that's not popping up unless you've got toes down. Exactly. So, as quick as we would expect it to be. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. I would have gone with ruling on the field as confirmed, but either way, it's an 18 yard game. You know how hard this a is? Third down Sprint to the left getting hit and still having to make that throw. I mean, he takes a shot right there from Gray as he's running full speed to his left, and he's got to throw that ball over someone into that small little window to help him. Again, you get to see the full display of Jordan Travis's skill set. This has been a big run. Tight end fold inside for them. Play action. Screen. 
And McDonald, the tight end, he scored a touchdown on a tight end screen last week, slipping out of the backfield against Syracuse, and he's got 16 here. Lots of patience by McDonald. Ball out of his hands, those receivers, great job blocking, getting them turned by Washington. Hands inside, so no holding. Beautiful play design. Same formation as the previous play. Travis extends the play, tucks it under, stays in bounds, and now steps out near the 10 yard line. Ritzy bunked him out, but he picked up 11 more. So that should be if the ball's right on the 10 yard line, first and goal. An example of what a quarterback can do that can run. You know, it's perfect coverage. The rush does a decent job of at least not allowing him outside the pocket initially, and Travis just has that ability to get around the edge. I think you lean on your run game here. Your offensive line, especially in the middle of it, has done such a nice job. Jay Sean Corbin back in the game, takes the handoff. To the six yard line. Corbin on the Giovanni Biggers, Biggers, Biggers on the tackle. Was there the on the stop. Florida State has done such a good job pulling people in their run game, their tight ends and their tackles. This is where eye discipline has got to come up big for Carolina's defense. A rollout for Travis. Wide open in the end zone, making a sliding touchdown catch is Ontario Wilson for the second time today. The 11th consecutive completion for Jordan Travis is another touchdown catch for Wilson. He just comes from the left side all the way across, picks up top. Wilson becomes uncovered in the front corner of that end zone. Just some poor communication. Looks like a little bit of a bobble by Wilson there. Rolling on the field is a touchdown. That play is under further review. Right, I think he keeps him off the turf. That should be a touchdown. The only other way you take it away from him is if you rule that before he regained or got complete control, he slid out of bounds. Now, if he's out of bounds when he finally gets complete control, then that would also be a reason to say this isn't a touchdown. So where does he have possession? No, 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 Second no. effort, he gets it he right gets. there. Yeah. yeah, he's got it. I, I think you're right. I think, I think it's, it's a, a catch, yep. Great camera work. This will good show a good angle of where his body is. Again, no possession, no possession, no possession. And I think he has possession right here. I actually like the fact that he's holding the ball up. You know, it almost seems like he realized, Bobble, put the ball in my left hand to show the officials I've got possession. And again, it was called a touchdown on the field. So that precedent being After set. Further review, the ruling on the field stands. And there it is. Touchdown. So Travis and Wilson for the second time today. 
and now Florida State doubling up North Carolina with a minute to go in the third quarter. All right, so Wilson's going to come in motion here and go run that little to the front pylon flat route. Now, the big thing is watch the communication by Carolina's defense. Now, the receivers up top, they're going to come down and run these picks. They're going to come down and just run these picks. Someone has got to play over the top of those picks to get out there for Wilson. They come down, the defenders bang into each other, there's no communication, and that's how you get that wide open receiver. You see everybody on the defense, hands up. There either has to be someone playing over the top or they have to kick everybody's responsibility changes. But those receivers come down, pick, there's no communication. Touchdown, Florida State. Well, last week at home, Florida State got a walk-off win against Syracuse, scoring 33 points. And that was an offensive explosion for the Knolls as they scored 38 in the opener against Notre Dame in a game that went to overtime. Now they've got 35 on the board through three quarters on the road against North Carolina. And they're kind of doing whatever they want. There's been a little bit of run game. There's been a little bit of pass game. The quarterback has been the best player on the field. Let's go back to Matt. All right, guys, I want to catch you up on what's going on between Georgia and Auburn. It's all dogs right now. Stetson Bennett to Ladd McConkey. Big play for the dogs. Touchdown, Georgia goes up 24-3. Give Bo Nix and Auburn credit. Come right back down. Take Bigsby, able to stay on his feet. Right now, 24-10, Georgia late in the third quarter. And in the ACC, how about this? Syracuse, Sean Tucker, 14 yards out. Orange over Wake, to Wake Forest, undefeated, 27-26. That would be a devastating loss for Wake. As it would end their unbeaten season to this point, as Hal throws one away. A lone unbeaten team left in the ACC. Just hurt themselves today. That's why they've got 17 points. The penalties, the drops, the red zone interception. Now you really have 16 minutes to play. You're in a three possession game. And you want to be an offense that runs your RPOs, and it's not necessarily conducive to the game situation. Emory Simmons breaks a tackle. He's got seven. The third down has been Ball such a Sam Howell run game situation for them today. They're getting this match coverage from Florida State, really like a man coverage. And if they leave the box numbers wise, you can still run Sam Howell. Paying attention, that's Downs right there. Try to create space for him. Four man rush out of an empty backfield. Quarterback draw, and Sam Howell. Easily picks up the first down, still on his feet to midfield. Getting downfield blocks. And finally run out of bounds by Kalen Deloach. 31-yard run for Howe. No one left in the box. There's the numbers. You spread them out. And if they're not there, it gives your ability, quarterback, the ability to That's run. That's the end of the third quarter. The two quarterbacks have combined for 223 yards rushing. Last week, LSU on the road to take on a Kentucky team that's feeling it right yeah, now. Yeah, their defense is playing so good. That environment is going to be incredible tonight as well. I'm, I'm pulling for Kentucky. Ty Chandler, not much there. Amari Gaynor in on another stop. A gain of about four. I think that North Carolina, as we head into the fourth quarter and them down right now, I think they got to use a play action shot here at some point. And I know you're in the high red zone, but these safeties for Florida State are starting to get nosy. Powell steps up in the pocket and throws a strike over the middle. Bryson Nesbitt, the true freshman tight end, down to the five-yard line. 
Watch the pocket movement. This is the base, base, slide, slide. Now keep your eyes downfield and find Nesbitt. That's that pocket movement, phone booth style from Howell. Chandler stood up right at the five yard line. No gain on first and goal. Malcolm Ray helped out on the stop by Fabian Lovett. And it looks like we may have a player down. That's Keir Thomas. A week from Tuesday to Washington to call my first game. Colorado at Washington. Back to football though. Second and goal after the injury timeout. Chandler swamped under behind the line by Fabian Lovett. It'll be third down and goal at the six yard line after a loss of one. What a great play by Lovett. Split in the center and the guard coming through. This Florida State defensive line has really created penetration. I think right now you got to try to find a way to use your tight ends, put somebody in the back of the end zone on third down, force that second level to jump up. Try high ball. Remember, Sam Howell, face mask or higher down here. Howell, back of the end zone. That was above every face mask on the field. As Nesbitt was the intended receiver, an official went down as well. And now it's fourth down and goal. Now, down by 18. This might be go for a territory. One, two to three to four. And he tries to find Nesbitt on that back crosser. Just good coverage. And it looks like Mac Brown's going to leave his offense on the field. And at some point, you need a field goal as one of your three scores. Right. But are you saying to yourself, are we going to get down inside the 10 yard line two more times, even if we kick a field goal here? What do you think? Score a touchdown, it's the right decision. <laughs> Ow, quarterback run. Instead, he pulls up and fires one into the end zone that's broken up. And North Carolina comes away empty. Josh Downs, the intended receiver, but it was a true freshman, Kevin Knowles, that knocked it away. Howells goes to scramble, pulls it, looking for Downs. Knowles is right there. Seminoles, get off the field. Mac Brown throughout the years got his start in coaching at Florida State. He had multiple knee injuries the last time happening because he was playing in a fraternity football game. He joked it was the best and worst thing to happen to me because then I had to coach. He said, figured I couldn't make a living anymore as a player, so I started coaching, and it's, uh, it's turned out pretty well for him, Bob. And for everyone that he has coached, as Corbin will pick up about three. All right, so the design quarterback draw is a walk-in touchdown. One of the ways you stop it, you stunt. Thomas goes down, Cooper comes around, the offensive line has to pass it off. Everyone's gone besides that middle linebacker. Cooper comes unblocked now. Howell scrambling, trying to make something out of nothing. But that is a walk-in touchdown, if not for that designed Thomas and Cooper stunt. Brilliant by Florida State's defense. And designed quarterback run, Dan Wright, that he had to adjust off of once he saw it wasn't there. Yeah, absolutely. Corbin. Check in with Matt. All right, guys. SMU and Navy. Navy playing much better the past couple of weeks. Tied at 24. Then Tanner Mordecai to Jordan Curley for the touchdown. SMU gets back on top 31-24 in the fourth quarter. Well, this is probably about as must a stop as North Carolina's defense will have. Third down and two. They have to get the ball back to their offense as soon as possible as we are down to 11 and a half to go. And if I'm thinking North Carolina defensively, protect the edges of your defense. I'd anticipate Florida State trying to get Travis on the edge. Pump fake and a run for it for Jordan Travis, and he's got the first down. And this is just improvisation. Nothing's there. They're trying to get a swing screen. It's not there. Tuck it and just be an athlete. Find that seam that just pops open, and that is a huge third down conversion. And I, I kind of mentioned before, those childlike reflexes, that's when you don't think much. As a kid, you're playing sports, it's just you see vision and you go. 
And those are good qualities to have and not get snuffed out. Travis has shown it a lot today. Corbin, a gain of one on first down. Sixth game of the year for Florida State. And the fifth time in six games that they have a 100-yard rusher. Three belonging to Jay Sean Corbin. And now for the second time this year, it's Jordan Travis. The interesting thing is leading into this game, they were very much so a perimeter team. You know, we talked about a catch and throw, kick the ball to the perimeter. And this has been pound the rock type of offense. And talking to their offensive coordinator, Kenny Dillingham, he said, we really want to be a physical team up front. We just haven't been able to be that because of the injuries. They've been that today. Now it's Ward. So that'll bring up third down and five. Cam Kelly made the stop. And if you just do math with the clock, every first down that Florida State picks up, it's another 2.15 or so they're going to be able to take off the yeah. clock. And now you just count backwards if you're North Carolina. It shows you down by 18 how important a third down stop is. It's huge. And it's, it's if you don't get a third down stop here, you're looking at seven minutes until you potentially get the ball back again. To your point, that's why this possession man coverage is huge. Travis. And he won't get there. Tried to reach the ball out, put it in harm's way. But Bohasek made the stop. It is fourth down. That'll take us under nine minutes to go, but North Carolina, really with no margin for error now offensively, will get the ball back. And North Carolina really now has to play, play in a two-minute tempo. You're not playing strictly just at the line of scrimmage. You're playing, we got 90 seconds left in this game. We got to score as quickly as possible. It's a good job by Florida State right now, allowing this clock to wind all the way down. Snap it with two, three seconds. Even better, snap it with one on the play clock. It's Mastromano. Line drive, returnable for Josh Downs. He's got speed to the sideline. And that's a good return and good field position for North Carolina. Jordan Travis Dan is healthy. And they can run him knowing that he is of full sound body. Well, he has been productive today. Yeah, and, and the ability to him for him to not only be in the designed run game, but also to make something out of nothing run game has been big for their offense. It's also opened a little bit for Ward and Corbin, their backs, you know, just having defenses forced to be paying attention to him. So now Sam Howell. Back to work, finds downs on a crosser to midfield, North Carolina Sam with eight Howell. minutes to go, needs three scores. Speaking of pizza, are you a pineapple on pizza person? I'm sure. Yes. That's a sin, dude. When you take a look at me, what, how many toppings are you imagining I'm going to be against? That's a valid point. Yeah. One should be pineapple, though. It doesn't belong in pizza. <laughs> They'll run it with Chandler. And he'll have the first down and gets driven out of bounds. Second and one, though. Would you be thinking shot play there when you need scores and you need chunk plays? I don't mind that call because you're just getting the first down. Yeah, I get your point first of taking your shot, but third down has been, your, your offensive line has not been fantastic today. I now think your tempo has to go. Again, you should be in two-minute drill, hair on fire pace. These are valuable 10, 15-second rips that are going off the clock. There's the shot from Hal. He's got man for man down the sideline, and it's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Emory Simmons. Simmons has just got to go back for this football. He's trying to go make that play. One of the things I'd love to see Simmons do is slow down just a little bit, go up to make that catch, force the defender to run through him. So worst case scenario, you get that pass interference. That being said, I would love to see number seven throw that ball out there. He won. You gotta go let him chase that football downfield. 25 yards a catch for Simmons leads the ACC. Jarian Jones got a pick earlier in the game down at the goal line on an underthrown ball. Now 
foul. Underneath again to Downs. Not much there. Ari Gaynor made the stop. We have a flag down. Pass interference. Offense, number 83. 15 yard penalty. Second down. Watch Olsen. Right here, trying to run through that linebacker. All right, so his job is to run through the inside of the linebacker. He's doing his job. The linebacker either has to F hit him or let him pass. Uh, that's inside of five yards. The defense is doing his job. The receiver's doing his job. That's not OPI to me. Four-man rush on second and 25. And this time, Howell can't get free. We've got flags down. The play is blown there dead as the ball pops out. The so it is a sack of Sam Howell, but we have to check the penalty marker. Fabian Lovett was there to bring down Howell. Is it going to be hands to the face or holding? Well, if it's a penalty against North Carolina, this should be very declined. quickly announced and declined by Florida State. You keep the clock rolling and take the sack. Let's see. Instead. It's the opposite. It's called against Florida State. That's a big one. Yeah, I think they got Jermaine Johnson right here working on that left tackle. Jordan Tucker right up there. Coach JB's guy. I don't know. I don't. Did it seem like he might have had the jersey just pulling him up, right? You can certainly see with the helmet going up why right. that draws the attention of the officials. But that was a second and 25 sack that gets erased and gives North Carolina a first down. How hit from behind and brought down. There's Jermaine Johnson. Watch Johnson, bottom of the screen. Work, work, work over the top. Chip the pack, get through him, get through him, retrace. Find the quarterback. You can be as talented as you want. Johnson transfers from Georgia because he wanted to prove he was an every down player. You do that by showing how great your effort is. That play shows that. First sack of the game for either team. And valuable time coming off the clock for North Carolina. They snap it with three on the play clock. DJ Jones with a stiff arm. Stays in bounds. Sidney Williams made the stop. And it looks to be good enough for a first down. He picked up 15. Middle of the field. That's where you should be thinking pass game work. The corners for Florida State are funneling everything to the sideline. Work the middle of the field. Got one on one at the bottom of the screen. North Carolina not playing nearly enough up tempo as Howell off play action. There's the middle of the field pass to Downs. Now, tempo, let's go. We got to get to the line of scrimmage. You should have this ball snapped before your clock gets to 440, 445. That time a little quicker. There's the swing pass to Jones. Gets a block. Brought down inside the 20-yard line. That was to to DJ Jones. Only a three-yard game. Amari Gaynor on the tackle. Another stop for Amari Gaynor. Four and a half minutes to go. But here, I, you, you call that swing pass. Great, you get three yards, but 40-plus seconds came off the clock. Al. Another check down underneath and another tackle inbounds. Mm -hmm. E.J. Jones 
is brought down by Sidney Williams and by making that stop Sidney Williams going to take another 20 25 seconds off the clock although he is hurt. So Williams shaken up after making the tackle on DJ Jones. Nebraska's got my attention too because I think Nebraska's better than three and three. It's a good challenge for Michigan. Third down and four after the injury timeout. And that should be good enough for a first down to Garrett Walston. But as soon as the officials set the ball ready for play, Walston came down inbounds. There goes the clock again. So North Carolina's got to get the ball in the end zone in short order. They're coming up on five minutes off the clock on this drive alone, and they're down by three scores. There's no urgency right now. Everybody should be playing with urgency. Josh Downs to the two yard line. And they will say this time he got out of bounds. Jarian Jones made the tackle. I don't think you can run the ball here. I really don't. I think this still needs to be a throw. Come on, come on, Carolina. Clock rolling again, under three minutes to go. There is the run to Chandler, and he's in for the touchdown with 2.47 remaining. Followed the tight end. Great vision by Chandler to pop off that left side. And Carolina finally gets in the end zone to make this a two-score game. And are they going to go for two here? At some point, you need a two-point conversion. Theoretically, not yet. But it looks like they are going to go for two now to try and cut the lead down to ten. I think this is the right decision to go for two here. Downs the man in motion. It's an end around and Downs looks like he's going to throw for it. Flips it in the back of the end zone and the trick play works. Antoine Green off the Josh Downs end around wide receiver pass. Scores the two and with 240 to go it's a 10 point game. It's a little bit of a Philly Philly special. They're going to bring Downs here and try to leak. Howell out. Green is actually just going to find himself open in the back of the end zone. This is really good by Towns. He's really trying to find Howell. Number one, not there. Now Green worked with them. Nice little throw there by Downs. Watch it from the back angle. Look at his eyes peek to Howell. He's not there. Gets the camera for a second. And that's just good spatial feel by Antoine Green. Didn't know where he is. That was a pretty good throw from Josh Downs. Yeah. There were only two players in the end zone for North Carolina. The other was covered. Right. That 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 trick play didn't have quite the desired effect for North Carolina. That was Downs to Green into a tight window. And now you have to have the onside kick as Grayson Atkins will see if he can steal a possession for North Carolina. It is loose. It was touched before it went 10, which means it's a live ball, but Florida State was able to cover it up. Let's check in with Matt. Guys, it's a remember where you were moment today in college football. I'm not sure what this is and what they're doing. All I know is that's how UMass ended their 16-game losing streak. They get the fight Norlovsky's 27-13. Another example of Dan Orlovsky is not walking through that door. Zach Evans is walking through a door tonight. TCU and Texas Tech coming up at the conclusion of your guys' game here on ESPN. I am going to wager Dude. that the only show today that a studio report will show the kneel down and field storming of UMass against UConn will be this show. And I wonder why they picked our program to show that highlight. As Treshawn Ward goes up the middle for about two and a half. I can't believe we lost to UMass, man. <laughs> well, First it's probably.
comes to motion, there's bad communication. No one carries, no one kicks out for Carolina's defense. Look at all the area that's wide open for Wilson to score his second touchdown of the day. This is a football team that was three for three in the red zone today. And a big part was the performance by Jordan Travis outside of the pocket combined with some of the play design. Career high 121 rushing yards for Travis on the heels of a 113 yard performance last week. Did we have, two years ago, did we call his first college game at Louisville? I thought we did against Georgia Tech. And I remember talking to Louisville about him and they were high on his ability and whatnot. And I believe it was his first time. He came in and threw a touchdown pass, I think, right before the half. And I was like, man, or maybe right before the end of the game. And you saw what a nice moment for that freshman. And obviously he's kind of taken control, control of this starting quarterback job at Florida State. Ward gets outside with a stiff arm. And he is out of bounds. That is certainly doing a favor for North Carolina on a three-yard gain by going out. I think that's what Jordan Travis is saying to Treshawn Ward. Is coming up next, TCU and Texas Tech. College football primetime as soon as we are done here on ESPN from Chapel Hill. Third down and three, so that bought just a few seconds for North Carolina. They still have two timeouts left. And should not on two minutes to go and should not snap this ball till that play clock gets down to one and I wouldn't even be surprised if Mike Norvell lets it go all the way down and call a timeout Ward spin move in the backfield breaking tackles it looked like North Carolina had him bottled up but he gets the first down and now Carolina is going to have to call a timeout before first down The play is there to be made by North Carolina. One missed tackle, two missed tackles, three missed tackles, and Ward just continues to show, I want it more, four and five. Look at the effort here. Spin, the balance, left hand goes down. What a run by the redshirt freshman from Plant City for, for this offense. And the Tar Heels have yet to call timeout number two. Now maybe a timeout was called by Norvell from the sideline. It was. 30 seconds. So Florida State, after losing their first four games to start off the season, a walk-off win, a game-winning field goal by Ryan Fitzgerald on the final play of the game last week against Syracuse, but they were coming into the Travis just killing time. He's going to hurt the rushing stats a bit for Florida State, but with 59 seconds to go in the game, takes a loss and forces North Carolina to use a timeout. Unless they didn't. Well, the clock stopped for the moment, but it seems like Mac Brown already with the headset off is basically waving the white flag. Yeah, I don't think you can stop the clock enough to get the ball back. Terrific performance by the Knowles on the road. is the final Florida State over North Carolina coming up next college football score and then shortly we head to the Big 12 Friday night headline of the day so far for you well the headline of the day was going to be Texas with a chance to knock off Oklahoma but that went away uh, so I think I think so far uh,